We're going to get started. I know you're all excited to be here. We're going to start our choruses though. So uh, thank you for all coming and welcome to everyone on the live stream. Another Sunday. Okay, beautiful day today. We're going to get started with some choruses. So my eyes have been enlightened. Hope everyone had a good prayer and fast weekend. Some very encouraging thoughts. Good folks, next one. The trees of the field, you shall go out with joy. All right, let's all stand for this one, folks. Get some air into the lungs. be seated. You're in fine voice today, folks. All right. All right, we are one. For those on the live stream that joined for the first time, the second part is in Papua New Guinean. Uh, what's the proper word? Pigeon? Pigeon. Pigeon. The second, second part of this one. Okay, pigeon English. Okay, here we go.
These are the days of Elijah. Number 594. Welcome, Pastor John. Big warm welcome. but that's okay. Sounded good? All right. God is moving every day, one of our newies. <clears throat> Number 560. The band are prepping themselves. <clears throat> Might have a couple of favourites after this one. Who does? Oh yeah, what's yours, Don, for next? 540? What's that? What's that, Don? 540? <laughs> I get nervous when it's in the 500s. <laughs> I'll trust you. Okay, we there, band?
40. Do we know this one? We confident? Those at home, are you confident? I've got a couple of nods. <laughs> All right, here we go. this side yes Glenn. there's a river of life <clears throat> number it's coming okay yep you're next Ray Fly 40 Ray did you have one for after this one I have decided straight after this, guys. Then we'll go into a hymn. All right. All good. <laughs> we might start, guys. All right, cool, cool. Two, three, there's a river of life flowing out from me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. There's a river of life flowing out from me. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well, makes me whole. Spring up a well, give to me that life. And again, there's a river of life flowing out from me. Makes a man to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, the captive is free. There's a river of life flowing out from me. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well, makes me whole. Spring up a well, give to me the life. And we'll leave it there. Okay. Last chorus, then our hymn. <clears throat> Thing was, I have decided. Yep. Here we go. 261.
beautiful. Number 75 for opening him, walking in the King's Highway, if we can all stand up. Sounding really good today, folks. Number 75. There we go. There we go. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I don't think that's it. Walking in the King's Highway. I've got 75. What number have you guys got? 75. So it's a hymn 75. Does that make a difference? There it is. Okay. Oh, we definitely got confused there. It's all good. Here we go. Just see the desert as a rose. Walking in the king's highway. Sounding good, pan of past Chris. Thanks very much, Tim. And we're going to open the meeting in prayer. We're going to get Brent and Yudi to open the prayer re- with prayer requests as well. Um, they'll be coming up right now. Um, and also, uh, just while we're doing that, our sister Carol's made a marvellous recovery. But on behalf of the family, this is Pete and Ange, uh, they are still, she's not out of the woods at the moment, but um, the Lord has worked marvellously. Um, and they're optimistic about a good recovery, but they're also not wanting to get ahead of the Lord and are very appreciative of, of our prayers, etc. And, uh, and people being really positive in their faith toward Carol's healing. Uh, but they're also mindful that she's got a little bit more to go and needs a bit more of our prayers. So if you can think about that with our sister Carol. And healing for Helen and also Julian provision of salvation. Uh, Ty, uh, for terminal cancer and comfort. Um, Mark healing, Carol healing for, for, for eyesight, Steph needs complete um, uh, whatever that is on, on, her, on the back, Aaron peace for, about, his, about his salvation, George and Mario healing and Anna comfort, Nick Ali uh, healing from injury sustained in a car accident, broken back, diagnosed she won't walk again, mother witness to and know that we are praying. Uh, Co for healing, Hayden healing from her back plane, Kay healing, I don't know if there's anybody else, 
Uh, but let's look right to the Lord, shall we? Let's praise the Lord. I thank you, Brendan. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, we just give you praise and thanks, Lord, that uh, we can gather around your word today, there, Father. Lord, that we have a common experience uh, that's spoken in your word, there, Father. Lord, that we know that you're alive and well, that you work in our lives, that nothing is too great or too small for you. And Father, as we bring these petitions under you, there, Father, Lord, uh, we rejoice uh, for the work that you do in our sister. But Lord, many others that are mentioned for all types of needs. Father, Lord, we have a great confidence in you that we see the signs and miracles and wonders round about us, that we know we can draw strength from you uh, each and every day. Father, Lord, that you build us up. Father, Lord, we just pray that you'll have your hand upon this meeting, that you'll bless it all unto us there, Father. We give you the praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And all the people said... Amen. Take a seat. Thanks, Brenton. Welcome here to the uh, Revival Fellowship Communion Meeting. If you're at home watching uh, or here today in the hall, we want to make you feel very welcome. We're, we're available for people to be baptised. If you're at home, 255 Pimpala Road is where our fellowship is. You might have been, we have had people come along, hear baptised and filled with the Holy Spirit, watching from a live stream uh, link somewhere in, in the suburbs of South Australia. In fact, we had one that was watching from Sydney end up getting baptised. Well, we're part of her getting baptised. So we want to make you feel very welcome. Here today, yesterday, we had a magnificent prayer and fast. Uh, the theme about, by all means, coming from the scripture in 1 Corinthians 9, 22, uh, Paul writes in a passage of scripture to the Jew, he became a Jew to the Greek, he became a Greek, and the, the weak became weak, that he might gain some, save some, and bring people home into their salvation with the Lord. So we have two further stories. If those two people that have been nominated could come up here now and sit up here, that'd be good. Trish and um, Phil, if they could come up. They're going to give their testimony. If you're looking at home and the word testimony, we will just say their story about what God has done in their life, how God has changed their life magnificently and proved himself beyond shadow of doubt that you can have a personal relationship with God today, if that's so desires of your heart. We're going to start with Trish, who's going to give her testimony. Thanks, Trish. Hello, everyone. I'd like to praise the Lord um, as much as I've fought this whole process, and I have fought it along the way. I got baptised in Spirit Field in 2008, and I really didn't understand the process, and I was caught in between two worlds. My family, who are very worldly, except for one, and a baptised family here. So I was trying to please both the people and found it extremely hard. So for my background, I actually was living in a Catholic convent in my younger days. I was a DCP child, and that's where I was sent for my placement. So I actually spent many, many years without parents, without rules, regulations, basically doing whatever I liked and stumbled my way through all that time. And one time I actually had a real miracle happen. I didn't want to read the Bible, I didn't want to do all that stuff. But the Lord never let me down and I was actually a domestic violence victim and I had been bleeding quite hard. I'd been in a fight between me and my husband and I'd taken to hospital and they said that you have to, the child's not gonna survive, the child is gonna be taken this afternoon. So we were fighting against that and so I had to ring my father in Adelaide to get him to come and get my one-year-old girl who was on her own in Wyala and in that time, this man came in the room and he wore a blue robe and he had the fuzziest hair, almost like roses. And he didn't speak English. I don't know what he was saying to me. I have no idea who he even was. And he started praying and when he left, um, the nurse came back and I said, who was the person that came in my room? And they said, oh, I love nobody's been in your room. And so that child's still alive today. The bleeding stopped instantly and Tari is still alive today for that. So I've had many, many miracles. So one this year that has been really, really harsh is 
I got put into the foster care system with a foster child who came into my care. And the Lord didn't leave me there on my own as much as it felt like it at times because it was been a real hard journey. Um, I have been persecuted and had tribulations come up against me that I didn't know how to deal with. But through the Lord and the pastors and have to come in here and show the pastor's letters that were pretty harsh and ask for some help. And on my family background, we were referenced in court as the poor man's mafia because we sorted it out ourselves. And so going from that to coming in here is a huge turn. So I just want to thank the Lord and praise the Lord. And so also with the foster care lady, my foster carer worker, who came along and presented Shaley to me, is also baptised in spirit field, and she's present from the Vogue. So the Lord has been with me for the whole journey, even though I didn't see the journey, and I have stumbled and fallen so many times. So I like to praise the Lord for everything he's done for me and held me up. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I certainly like to thank and praise the Lord. Because of the diligence of a, a certain uh, particular lady in the assembly that come along to my wife and ministered the truth, and when that truth eventually come unto me that we'd seen through a program, I'd ask my wife to go away and find about speaking in tongues. And when my wife come back to tell me the joy that she had just received from this particular sister in the Lord who'd ministered the full gospel, in my mind, I'll tend to this and I'll tend to this and look after it myself. And uh, 11 months later, after I was reading the Bible, I realised that uh, I was uh, up against a, a very hard wall. And I thank and praise the Lord for His love and His grace, His mercy. That uh, this sister and a brother come along to our place 11 months later. And I've seen for myself the wonderful power and the glory of the Lord within these people as they ministered the word of God in faith and in truth. And even though at that particular time, brethren, I never said a word. I just sat there all night and just watched them as they performed. And on that Tuesday night, we were very blessed, asked to come along to the meeting at the Vogue Theatre. And my impression as I walked into the Vogue Theatre, I was coming home. And the second impression that I got, I seen everybody with a Bible on their lap. And that was a wonderful joy that I could see. And the third one was, Pastor John gave the word. Even though today I cannot remember what the word was. Sorry, Pastor John. <coughs> but that word made a tremendous impact on my life. I could see the fact as clearly that water baptism was the way to which the Bible in which Jesus Christ had implemented it to go. Carol and myself were both baptised on that night and on the Friday night house meeting, Carol received and I didn't. I didn't quite go home with the shakes and a bit sulky, but at any rate, I seek the Lord and on the Sunday, the Lord was very gracious. He gave me the holy gift of the Holy Spirit. I spoke in tongues. I had an absolutely brilliant infilling. I feel like a red-eyed iron had just gone through me. And I praise the Lord that what I had in my life had to be born up. And from that time on, brethren, my life changed. From the things that I was enduring through hay fever, migraine headaches, when I was baptised, I was immediately healed. And from that time on, we've had a life of a joy and peace. We've had our trials and we've had our sicknesses. But Jesus Christ has never failed. He's never let us down or abandoned us as we look to him in faith and believing that the fact is he has brought through Carol myself through various trials and with our children from time to time. And probably one of the first trials that I had was going to camp. On our first camp, I accidentally rolled my F100 over on my daughter, Rebecca. And I didn't realise that. I'd got Carol and uh, Catherine out and Gil Richter, who was there alongside of that time, and I took him away on a blanket in case there were any chance that the uh, truck might uh, burst into flames. And then I heard a little baby crying, and I went back to the truck, and I seen all I could see was Rebecca with her little shoulders and head 
The rest of her body was underneath the truck. I immediately called Carol and Gil Richter. I said, come over here, and they come over, and I said, we're gonna pray, we're gonna put it to the Lord. And when we put our hands upon the Lord, I said to Carol, when the truck lifts up, Carol, you get Rebecca out. And that's exactly what happened. And to this day, I've still got two wonderful daughters in the Lord and their children. I thank and praise the Lord for that. From times of migraine, headaches and fractured ankles, been wonderfully healed. I've been raised off the operating table with a heart situation. As they were preparing me for open heart surgery, the wonderful Lord, in all his glory and praise, the wonderful physician healed me when I didn't have to suffer open heart surgery. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but it's, such a, uh, it's so easy to listen to t testimonies like today we've heard, isn't it? Really easy to listen and, and get edified by what God's doing in people's lives. That's a taste. If you're thinking about getting baptised, that can be your testimony t today as well. God will start working in your life this hour. We'll hopefully we'll start off with the word of God coming alive in your heart and soul and getting it motivated to where you want to be baptised or filled with the Holy Spirit or get healed, whatever it might be. God's here today for you, and in the meantime, we know that that's what happened too through the Word of God, and we're going to hand over now to Pastor John, who will present the Word of God to us here today. Let's turn to our Bibles, shall we? Thanks, Pastor John. Thank you, Pastor Chris, and thank you to those who brought their testimonies and for all the wonderful singing and all that. It's just great to be here again. It's uh, one of the disadvantages of this COVID thing. We uh, sort of seem to be locked off from each other. We might be able to get together in the local groups, but to uh, get around to all our brothers and sisters and missing the opportunity to uh, go further afield. I did get the chance to go to Wyala uh, a few weeks ago. That was nice. Anyway, praise the Lord. So <clears throat> uh, I'll get you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, if you will. Um, quite often if we start talking to people about the Lord and uh, they might ask us uh, what church we go to and what sort of a church is it um, I like to describe it as a book of Acts church because uh, if we say Pentecostal well uh, that sort of <laughs> that some people call themselves Pentecostal we don't really want to be linked with them to be honest because they do some strange things uh, but um, <clears throat> they probably think we're strange but anyway um, <clears throat> so if we see ourselves as a book of Acts church and that's what I want to talk about today and uh, just before we get there we're going to have a look at a couple of verses at the beginning of Luke's gospel chapter 1 and verse 1 because uh, uh, the, uh, the book of Acts is a sequel to the, uh, the gospel of Luke uh, verse 1, for as much as as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which were from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the, the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. And I have to mention his name because he's mentioned later in the book of Acts that you might know the certainty of those things wherein they have been instructed. And so Luke is one of the uh, four who, who wrote a gospel, which is, means the good news. So you've got Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and then John. And uh, so he, um, uh, Luke was, uh, was a physician, and uh, he uh, also was obviously a writer. And uh, so this is what he wrote. So we start from here and throughout the, uh, the next 24 chapters, we, we read the story of Jesus, his birth, his childhood, uh, and then the beginning of his ministry right through to his death and his resurrection and his ascension to go back into heaven. So we'll have this all the little bits out and all the middle bits, and we'll go right to the end of Luke's gospel and the last few verses there of Luke 24 and so <clears throat> after Jesus rose from the dead and uh, he, was, uh, he was talking there uh, to uh, his disciples 
and verse 45 that they didn't quite understand a lot of things but he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said thus it is written and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things and behold I send the promise of my father unto you but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And so this is the last words recorded for us that Jesus said here on earth, uh, according to uh, what uh, Luke has recorded for us here. So the, the message just before he went up into heaven to his disciples, I've uh, proved to you I'm alive after being killed. I've uh, risen from the dead. And just before he was taken up into heaven, he said, you wait in Jerusalem until the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's most important you do that. He led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them, and it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Now, if we can go over to the book of Acts which is um, just after the Gospel of John. And we'll start there in the beginning of the book of Acts. And again, I'm not going to read the whole book of Acts. Uh, I'd love to. Uh, but verse 1 says, The former treatise, which means a recording, have I made, O Theophilus, we've heard about him before. Sounds a bit Greek to me, but anyway, praise the Lord. There were a lot of them in the church, and still a lot today, praise the Lord. Uh, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up in after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion his, uh, his death he made many infallible by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he you have heard of me just carrying on like if you're watching a serial well uh, <coughs> it comes on and it usually comes on and you might uh, be following something on the telly or a radio show and you think oh you know I've sort of known that bit before but they're just making sure you've caught up with the bits before so it's some, some continuity and so he repeated this uh, Luke repeated what Jesus has said and be, being assembled together with them commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith he have heard of me for John, as John the Baptist truly baptised with water, but you shall be baptised with the Holy Ghost, uh, not uh, many days hence. And so, <clears throat> um, and then we go on to read, maybe we'll just pick it up down in verse, uh, uh, well, we'll read verse 6. And when therefore they were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And so he still had to, um, teach them certain things they were still looking for a political solution to the problems that they had there uh, but that wasn't what he had in mind not at this stage that comes with the second coming and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own power but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth and so he said, once you receive the Holy Spirit, it will then spread out to adjoining uh, countryside, to adjoining nations, right all the way to Woodcroft in South Australia. And uh, it might take a little while to even find out it existed. Anyway, we come down here. Um, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, or actually angels, stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why standing ye gazing up into heaven? For this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. And so now we see the next uh, um, long-term uh, plan, prophecy of what was going to happen with Jesus. He's coming back again. It's the same Jesus that's coming back. And uh, that's why it, it's just so wonderful to be reading the book of Acts because when you really believe that that's our pattern that we follow, that is uh, our model, 
And, uh, and so <laughs> people start to ask us, well, um, well, what church are you like? I know on one occasion I was, uh, many, many years ago, I was uh, in Elizabeth, and um, I got a job at the Elizabeth Post Office, and shortly after I started there, I had a very uh, difficult job. I was selling postage stamps and uh, sorting mail and that sort of thing, which was fitted in well with my mental capabilities. And uh, anyway, there was a young lady came to work there shortly afterwards, and, uh, and the word had got around. I'd been witnessing to the posties and so on. And uh, so uh, she, uh, uh, she'd heard, oh, I heard you're a minister of religion, I was all well, sort of. And uh, she said, oh, what are you, Anglican? Well. No, and uh, so I was able then to explain to because she asked, well, she came to the Lord. Praise the Lord for that, and others of her family as well. So, um, yeah, so people ask you, what, what is it like? But when we can say, well, uh, I'd just like to describe to you what sort of church that we're aiming to be like, and as much as possible, we want to be like this church. And there it is, the blueprint for us in the book of Acts, and it all starts off by people hearing the gospel and uh, then waiting, calling on the Lord till they've received the Holy Spirit. Now, I think uh, to many of you, you're quite familiar with all of this, but in chapter 2, we read where it happened to them. They're all in the uh, upper room praying. Uh, uh, chapter 2 and verse 1, the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were all gathered there. And we read down in verse 4, and they were all filled. That was the 120 that had gathered by this time. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, um, I may be, uh, well, I know I'm preaching to the converted in, in the main here, but just reminding us of how the church started, because our church started the same way. It all started because somebody received the Holy Spirit. And there were the connections, and I think you probably know the story about uh, the work of the Revival Fellowship here in South Australia. It, um, it came through connections in uh, Victoria, uh, that um, there, were, there was a, an assembly in Geelong, and uh, some, uh, the McConaughey family came to the Lord, and uh, there was uh, mum and dad and three daughters. There was Janet and Lorraine and Helen, and they were uh, all baptised and spirit-filled, but they, uh, they had connections back in Sejuna in South Australia. So uh, uh, first of all, the father went over and tried to talk to people. They didn't believe him because he was, uh, he was a Scotsman and a bit of a scallywag, a uh, nice one. But um, anyway, uh, he was quite delighted uh, by telling the relatives, although they were actually his in-laws, he said, I, uh, he said, well, he said, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that I was a saint, would you? And they said, no, we definitely wouldn't. And, uh, but anyway, so he said, I'll send Janet and Mum over to, so which they did. They came a year later. Uh, they witnessed to, to some relatives there who got uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and baptised. And later on, uh, Janet came back with a couple, Len and Joan Day, and they had an outreach in Sejuna. And that's where I came to the Lord, because I was born over there as well. And so it all started be pe by people receiving the Holy Spirit. I mean, if I had gone along to a meeting and I hadn't received the Spirit, or well, I would have, wouldn't have bothered leaving the Methodist Church because it wouldn't have been any different to, to being there. And so that's, that's what happened. Anyway, we read later how that Peter, on this occasion here, he preached to the crowd that gathered to hear what was going on, and uh, they were convicted because the miracle was happening. There was all these people speaking in different languages that they'd never learned. Just miraculously, they were bursting forth in the prayer languages. And this, this occasion, they were actually languages God chose that, that was a great sign to the people that gathered from all the regions round about and understood what was going on. And this was proof that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, he'd gone back to heaven as he said he would, and he'd sent down the Holy Spirit, and here they had this visible proof, or this uh, material proof, they had this wonderful experience of speaking in tongues, and uh, that was proof that Jesus was alive, it was proof that these people had received the Holy Spirit, and the other proof was the incredible change in their life, that they now became very bold, and they wanted to tell other people, and so, 
that and the, the instruction was given when they said what shall we do they said you repent you be baptized and you'll receive the holy spirit and that's mentioned there in uh, verse 38 anyway i want to go on and just touch on a few other things here um, in uh, the book of acts if if we go to chapter 10 uh, <coughs> we will see uh, there's just so many stories and uh, I sort of, last couple of days have been going through the book of Acts and I thought, what can I leave out? Well, I did leave a couple of bits out, but uh, anyway, so I'll try not to keep you here till midnight. But anyway, in, in chapter 10, we read where Peter uh, had um, been called. The Lord showed him to go uh, to, uh, to the household of Cornelius he was a Roman centurion and he preached the gospel to him and the Holy Spirit fell on Cornelius and the others that were there and they too spoke in tongues. We read it in verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word and the, they of the circumcision, that's the Jews, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out to the gift of the Holy Ghost. And how did they know? because they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, just like happened on the day of Pentecost. And then he said, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptised which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptised in the name of the Lord, and they prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now, <clears throat> these were the sort of uh, verses that I heard, the first meeting that I went to, and I could see that it was right. And uh, <coughs> I've preached on it hundreds of times since and I've, uh, I've heard others preach on it hundreds of times since and I never tire of it because I just know that this is getting people on the right track. This is tarrying until you get filled with the power of God and then you are equipped to go out and to uh, minister to others. Now uh, <coughs> we, we find that uh, uh, Peter uh, then he baptised these people and then he was uh, challenged by the Jews back in Jerusalem who were still uh, not getting over their uh, uh, sort of uh, racial superiority that they had and uh, so they didn't think that, that the Gentiles deserved to get saved and uh, strangely enough um, people with their nationality uh, uh, differences and superiority feelings uh, are still around to this day the, all different nations get up to it but but God's not interested he wants to make us all one in Christ anyway so uh, Peter got into trouble what are you doing going and doing this so he recounted <coughs> what happened if we go over <coughs> chapter 11 um, and it says uh, uh, yeah and he, he's explaining he's given his excuse for why he baptized these Gentiles in verse 12, and he said, The Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. He was called to go, and the, the, the Lord convicted him he should go there. And he said, These six brethren accompany me. I've got some of my Jewish brothers here that came along as well, so don't just pick on me. As so I went into the man's house, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, who stood and said, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And uh, so this is, uh, <clears throat> this is just so wonderfully simple and uh, it just tells us that this is the message. And, uh, and, and he said, as I began to speak, recounts what happened, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on, the, as on us at the beginning. The same experience. And then I remember the word of the Lord, how that he said, John baptised with water, but you shall be baptised with the Holy Ghost. For as, then as, for as much then as God gave them the light gift as he had given unto us, who believed in the Lord Jesus, what was I that I could withstand God? So to refuse people baptism is withstanding God. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. And so, anyway, so there we go. Now let's go to chapter 19. And I guess this is where I'm wanting to really uh, lead to as much as I can. Um, now, in chapter 19, uh, we'll start off uh, where the Apostle Paul, and uh, we can't fill in all the bits where Paul was converted and so on, but here he is, one of the great apostles. At chapter, where are we? Uh, 
chapter, what did I put down there? Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, chapter 19. Okay. And uh, here we find in verse 1, it came to pass that while Apollos, another preacher, was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Under what then were you baptized? And they said, Under John's baptism. And then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They'd come across people who'd had a baptism, but it wasn't the... The, the one that, that Jesus wanted people to have. John the Baptist was just baptising people because they were recognising that they were sinners. But, uh, but when the gospel was going forth, it was to get people baptised with a view to receiving the Holy Ghost. Or, as happened with some of us, like Cornelius and me, and others, that we received the Holy Spirit and then we were commanded to get baptised. And so that's the way the church operated then. And that's the way that we still operate today. And when they heard this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Paul laid hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came on them. They spoke in tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about twelve. Verse 8, and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months. I guess he had knocked off for meal breaks anyway. And dis disputing and persuading the thing concerning the kingdom of God. But when diverse or different ones were hardened and believed not, he but spake evil of that way before the multitude. There's, there's all these arguments going on in the synagogue. He departed from thence and separated the disciples, the ones who believed the gospel and uh, got baptised in spirit field. He, uh, he, 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 uh, he took them away and, uh, and they, they went to the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now, I want to get to that verse because it talks about uh, the people in Asia. Now, doing a little bit of a geography lesson, uh, it made me realise that, um, that the region that was called Asia was just... Well, a, a portion there wasn't talking about the largest continent on earth. Uh, it was just that, what we would call Asia Minor today. And, and so I wanted to go in a moment to the book of Revelation, where it's talking to the churches in Asia, but it seems that, uh, that, that uh, Ephesus uh, was, uh, well, it was, it was a very big city, and it was, a, it was really a, a very wicked city, a very uh, pagan city, and uh, there's uh, sort of artists' impressions around of what the temples were like and so on. And uh, they had a, 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 a goddess there by the name of Diana. And, um, and she was, uh, well, we'll we read a little bit about this. Um, but anyway, but what I'm getting at is that the, the message which taught in Ephesus spread out through the region round about of which Ephesus seemed to be like a, a central spot. And uh, certainly as far as the pagan worship was concerned, we can pick it up down in, uh, uh, where, did we, where did we get to? Uh, down to verse uh, 23. Um, <clears throat> verse 23, at the same time there arose no stall, small stir about that way for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of the occupation and says, you know that by this craft, good name for it, craft, crafty lot, we have our wealth. Moreover, we see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, the whole region round about, this Paul, hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying there are no gods which are made with hands. Well, hallelujah. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at nothing, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. She'll be really upset over this. And, he, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshippeth. She is the, the chief religion in, the, in the, the, the area around about there. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath 
and cried out saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. I'm sure that the thing that influenced them most was their, their, uh, their pocket nerve, their, their money pocket nerve. And uh, suddenly, if this keeps up and these people all become Christians, and uh, they, they find out that their body has become the temple of the Holy Spirit and all these buildings are, are, are nothing, and uh, we, we, we'll, be, we'll lose our occupations. We might, might even have to become Christians and work for a real living and all that sort of thing. Anyway, we go on to read, and the whole city was filled with confusion and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the center, into the center. And when Paul would have entered into the temple, the disciples suffered him not. So there was a great riot and the governor of the city managed to just uh, rescue Paul and he lived to, to fight another day. But I was just wanting to bring out that these things were all to do with uh, not just the city of Ephesus, but the region all around about, and uh, they're mentioned for us and when we get over into the, uh, um, into the book of Revelation. But we'll go to the book of Ephesians. There's a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to these people. And um, I'm just wanting to um, make it clear that what... Um, what um, was taught in the beginning uh, was continued on. If we go to the book of Ephesians in chapter 1 and uh, we read, we pick it up in verse 12. He said that you should be to the praise of his glory which first trusted in Christ. And, and he's reminding them what happened to them. He said, I'm just reminding you what, how you came to be in this church. He said, in whom you also trusted. You trusted in Jesus Christ after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, him whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And of course, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, which we read about there, which is the earnest or the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. And so the process there, he reminded them of it. You heard the gospel, you believed the gospel, you trusted the gospel, you did what it said, you got baptised and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that was a, a continuation. I don't know how much later it was that he wrote all of this, but I'm sure that this teaching was going throughout the whole region roundabout. And also, if I can just take up another little point in chapter 6 here, where he's giving them some great advice. And verse uh, 10, he says of chapter 6, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God. And he goes on to describe that, uh, what this is like, because it's a spiritual armour. We're not fighting a natural war. It's, a, it's fighting against the, the things of this world, the things of a natural person, of our natural flesh. And we take on the armoury of God, and he lists them all. We haven't got time to go into a lot of detail. But he talks about truth and of righteousness and preaching the gospel and of faith and our salvation and uh, the word of God, the, the Bible and, uh, and of course prayer that you might like to read that yourself and, and, and it's been spoken on many times but I want to take you now to the book of Revelation and uh, <clears throat> I, uh, many people find the book of Revelation hard to understand and I'm one of them and, uh, but I, I usually get all right for the first three chapters and then I don't know where to go after that. Last couple are all right too. But um, anyway, these, these first three chapters are um, uh, talking particularly to these churches that were associated with Ephesus. And we, uh, we'll start in Revelation chapter 1 and we'll start in verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that uh, reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things that are written therein for the time is at hand. And then he starts off by saying, this is, this is John. Um, he was, uh, he's writing this. He's uh, obviously, I think, probably that uh, Paul had probably been uh, uh, martyred by this time. And I think they say it was around about 80, 90 or something like that. 
And so he says, uh, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us, uh, from our sins in his own blood and made us kings and priests under God and the Father. And so he's just uh, dedicating this to the one who loved us. Jesus loved us so much he came down to this world, offered himself as our substitute. He uh, paid the price. He, uh, his blood was shed for us and, and, and we've been washed uh, of our, our sin and he has made us. From being sinners, he's made us saints. He has, uh, has set us up on high. He's made us overcomers. He's given us the victory over all sorts of problems that we had before, and we're going to live forever, and that's pretty exciting. So there we go. So we've got these, um, these seven churches. I'll just read a little bit more uh, here, if we can go to, uh, to verse 10. And John is saying here, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and uh, we... Uh, we uh, understand that to be that it was a Sunday, first day of the week. The, the Israel used to uh, have the sixth, uh, the, the seventh day of the week um, uh, to uh, their Sabbath day, but Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week, and so the Christians um, remembered the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So here he was. He was out on the island of uh, Patmos, out in the middle of the Mediterranean there. Oh, one end of it and um, <coughs> he was uh, there really pressing in with the Lord and having a great time with the Lord and the Lord spoke to him he said I am Alpha and Omega I'm the beginning and the end of the alphabet the first and the last and what do you see write it in a book and send it under the seven churches which are in Asia and uh, so just looking at that clock it's uh, oh that's good it's stopped that's good so uh, anyway um, here yeah. I'm trying to rush. I get me, I get me merds waddled if I'm not careful. Anyway, we see there. He said, "I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last." What do you see? Write it in a book and send it under the seven churches which are in Asia. And he lists them off. First of all, Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And uh, so, <coughs> these are the churches which uh, um, were. Uh, were there to, uh, 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 where, where will I go? I did jot it down where I wanted to stop there. Uh, so we'll go down to verse 20. And he talked, and I better read a little bit more up here, verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. These were lights that were burning there. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, uh, reference to Jesus of course closed with a garment down to the foot and a beard about the paps with a golden girdle and his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like undefined brass as they burned in the furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters a very impressive sight and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was the sun shining in his strength the sharp two-edged sword is of course his word the word of God is a sharp two-edged sword and we find that out don't we if we try to, uh, to kick against it we suddenly find that the Lord convicts us and sometimes we, we're feeling guilty about something and uh, we, somebody says something or we're listening to a meeting and a, and a, and a scripture hits us and oh I, I really cop that and so that's the way it's meant to be so that it can help us to get back on the right track and so um, so we've got the word of God that he's speaking but it describes a little bit later down here um, and he says in verse 19 write the things which you have seen and things which are and the things which shall be hereafter and the mystery of the seven stars which you saw us in your right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels or the messengers of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which, which you saw are the seven churches. So you've got these seven churches that are, uh, that are lights that are burning, each in their individual location and uh, here they were, uh, some of them were maybe only a a few miles apart from each other some were quite a distance away but each one 
as far as God was concerned, was a candle, a light that was burning in that village or that city. And uh, so that's what they were. And the seven angels, I always like this bit, because of, according to my uh, concordance, an angel is the pastor of the local church. So uh, you mightn't believe this, but you, you have to. But we're actually angels. And, uh, but uh, we, we're messengers. We're only angels if we're bringing the right message. And uh, so, uh, yeah, otherwise, we've, if we get the right message on Sunday and don't live it during the week, we're, we're uh, Sunday angels and Monday devils. So, uh, yeah, it's up to us to uh, make sure we're, uh, we're, we're bringing the right message. And now, why I'm bringing all of this out is that <coughs> these churches all started off like the church in Jerusalem with God pouring out his spirit, some faithful preacher coming and telling them the way of salvation. They repented of their sins, they got baptised in water, they received the spirit, they spoke in tongues, and they started off on the journey. But along the way, they drifted off. And that's, that's a warning to all churches. I mean, sadly, there are a lot of churches today that are not really churches at all, because... You, uh, the, the word Christian means an anointed one. And if you're not anointed by the Holy Ghost, you're not really a Christian. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, we read in, in Romans chapter 8. And uh, so, I mean, people think, oh, you shouldn't criticise other churches. Well, if you don't tell them the truth, well, how are they going to get saved? And, uh, and so, anyway, praise the Lord. So here we are, we've got these churches, and we're going to read a few little things about it just to point out a few, few dot points here. Now, the church at Ephesus, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, unto the angel or the, the messenger of the church in, in Ephesus write, These things saith he that holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. In other words, Jesus Christ is saying to the messenger of the church, at uh, Ephesus, I know your works and your labour and your patience, how you cannot bear them which are evil, and you have tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and uh, has uh, found them liars and has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has laboured and has not fainted. So he starts off by giving them, uh, you know, a, a tick. And uh, in, in, in these areas, you've, you've passed the tests. The inspectors have come and had a look at you and decided that there's certain things you're doing which uh, I commend you for. But, he goes on to say, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence you have fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto you quickly and will remove your candlestick out of his place except thou repent. And so when you look at your, at your history book now or the encyclopedia or whatever as to what's happening now, not only is the church at Ephesus not there anymore, the whole city's not there anymore. It's just uh, been overrun. Some of the places are mentioned here, they've still got a city there maybe by a different name, uh, but, um, uh, but the, the church has not survived. And so you think, oh, well, that was 2,000 years ago. But... There are, there are churches, there are spirit-filled groups that, uh, that in modern history have uh, started off more or less as, the same way as we did, maybe with a few little differences, doctrine here and there, but basically where they're all filled with the spirit and so on, and uh, they've run into difficulties. And so, so what's that clock saying to me? So I'm nearly time up, is it? Yeah. Okay, all right. So, all right. Anyway, I'm, I'm nearly halfway through. So, uh, <laughs> okay. So I'll just, uh, so tell me straight, how, how much longer have I got? Oh, I've gone over time, have I already? Ten minutes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, good. All right. Okay. So, emphasis, they'd lost their first love. There was just something, they didn't love the Lord as much as they used to. You go to Smyrna, 
and we find that, that they were living in a time of persecution. There's another aspect of all of this. It does represent the different ages down through the, the last 2,000 years and so on. And Smyrna represents a time of great persecution to the church. And they, it was commendation to them. They, they were faithful unto death. Some of them even killed for their faith. You go to Pergamos and uh, <coughs> they, they harboured people with pagan ideas. There were even some complimentary things said about them, but a lot of you are doing all right, but you've let people in that have got ideas about worshipping idols and this sort of thing, and that is, uh, is, is, is going to wreck your church. And uh, then you go on to, to um, that was Pergamos, then we got Thyatira, and uh, they had some quite complimentary uh, things said about them as well. They, uh, they, they had love, they had service, they had faith, they had patience, uh, but they were giving way, they were allowing Im immorality to foster in the church, both in a natural way and in a, in a religious way as well. So he said, that's, that's not good, naughty, naughty. And then you go to chapter three and you come to Sardis, and uh, they were a church that uh, had a name that they lived, but they, they weren't. And so they were actually uh, claiming to be something which they weren't. And uh, so he said, well, you say you, you, you've got a name that you're living, but you're dead. So you can't get much more blunt than that. And so, and then you, you come to Philadelphia, and our good old Philadelphia, it means brotherly love. And they obviously displayed that in their church. They were small, but they were a faithful group of people. And, uh, and, and the city of Philadelphia uh, was, was and probably still is prone to massive earthquakes. And, um, and so, um, yeah, the, in spite of all of this, they, they were a faithful group. And then you come to the church of Laodicea, and I did actually quote something from this yesterday at the, at the end of the, at the, uh, uh, the AGM and so on. But Laodicea was a church which uh, was lukewarm and materialistic. Apparently, in the natural sense, it was a very wealthy area, and, uh, and the church got caught up in all of this, and they say, look at us, we're doing fine. We've got this and that and the other thing, and we're rich and increased with goods. Uh, chapter 3, when we read it there, um, it, and the Lord said, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were either one thing or the other. And so then, because you are lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That's fairly descriptive. Because thou sayest, I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and don't you know that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked? He said, my counsel, my advice to you is to get, um, get some spiritual wealth into your life. And he talks of the gold tried in the fire, which is faith. And, and the white raiment is the righteousness of Christ that's imputed to us. And uh, to anoint our eyes with eyes salve, that's getting the Holy Spirit so that it can show us what to do. And he says in verse 9, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, open to him and come and sup with him and he with me. And then with all of these churches, they all finish up that to those individuals, even within a church which was not going very well at all, the individuals that were overcomers will get a great reward. And so I think we, if we look back to the first church we looked at here in Revelation and, uh, and to see, uh, well, they were told that they'd, they'd just lost their first love and they had to repent of that. They were on a downhill slope and they needed to get back. And so it, it behoves us. It's, it's very easy for us. We, we've got this fantastic fellowship. And uh, nowadays there's lots of amazing things that are happening now with modern technology and people are, are communicating all over the world and we're picking up uh, some wonderful testimonies and some great communications here, there and everywhere. And, uh, and we, we really love our fellowship. I know we got shut off from each other and lately we've been able to get back together more and more and it's a fantastic fellowship but what I think we need to understand and, and sometimes maybe I could just take you to Acts chapter 20 um, 
And again, we're at Ephesus, or not quite at Ephesus. We're at a place near Ephesus, and Paul's in a, in a hurry to get to Jerusalem. And uh, it's amazing that he wanted to get there because he knew he was going to get killed when he got there. But he knew that's what he had to do. And he was at a place called Miletus, uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 17. And from this little place, which was a seaport not too far from Ephesus, he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. So he got all the leaders of the church at Ephesus, and there might have been a lot of them. It was probably a pretty big church. And so they came down, and he just uh, talked to them and, uh, and, and reminded them a few things. He says... Um, uh, verse 26 I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God and then he said take heed therefore unto yourselves to the leaders of the church the, all the angels that he had gathered there take heed for, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has, has made you overseers now the, there's an Ill, a pastor is actually a shepherd and, uh, and his, his job is to look after the flock. And uh, when Peter was challenged by the Lord, and the Lord said, uh, do you love me? And, uh, and Peter said, yeah. Well, the Lord said, feed my lambs. And then the Lord said, do you love me? And then the Lord said, feed my sheep. And the Lord said, do you love me? And then, and then he got niggly. Uh, does that word you still use? He got, he got annoyed. He's picking on me. Of course I love you. And the Lord said, feed my sheep. And then he went on to tell him that he was going to suffer a, a violent death himself. But the message is, if you're a shepherd of the sheep, you've got to feed the flock. And the flock need to follow what the shepherd's telling them to do. And the, as we read here, that the, uh, uh, well, I'll read it again, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to which, which he has purchased with his own blood. They're, I mean, we're pastors, but it's not our church. We're shepherds, but they're not our sheep. They're God's sheep, and um, we're sheep too. For I know this, that after my departing, Paul says, shall grievous wolves enter among you and not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn you. And so if you, you wonder sometimes... Uh, we've had people say to us sometimes, oh, we just want to hear happy talks. We just want to hear, uh, you know, upbuilding talks. And, uh, but, you know, the Lord loves us. And the Lord, because he loves us, he wants us to know when we're going wrong. The Lord chastises us because he loves us. If he didn't care, he'd say, well, if you want to do that, well, away you go. I couldn't care less. But he does care, and so do we. And, and so that's why. And sometimes it might sound as if we're a little bit too blunt. It might sound as if we're a bit too restrictive And when we're saying about staying out of the world and so on. And, and we have to decide where the boundary is sometimes as to what we think is, is a proper thing. And so we might sound like, we, and sometimes maybe we are a bit picky. We might say, oh, we want people to, to dress a certain way and so on. Well, we just want people to be neat. It doesn't matter if it's casual, but, uh, and, and it's got to be modest and all these sort of things. And, uh, you know, and if we're up on the platform, for instance, well, we should, uh, you know, not have jeans with uh, the knees poking out. Uh, some people think they've got beautiful knees, but anyway. So, uh, all right, well, look, I've gone over time, but I'll, I'm, I'm now going to hand out. You're still awake there, Matt? That's good. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Pastor John. <clears throat> I'm glad I decided to wear a tie today, <laughs> albeit a beautiful pink one that my daughter chose for me. Never thought I'd be up here with a pink tie, but sacrifices you make as a father. Um, we're going to turn to our time of communion now, so if I can get the band to come forward, please. Actually, there's no way I would have fallen asleep then, because I had this image in my head. I don't know if you've ever looked at Pastor Chris and thought, gee, he's really broad across the shoulders. It's because he's got his wings tucked in behind his back, his, an his angel wings. There you go. You know why that now? Yeah. Okay, we're going to sing hymn number 
number nine, I think, when we've got the slides up there. It's actually just thinking, um, while we're waiting for that to all happen, um, Stevie and myself actually had the good fortune to go over to Ephesus, and it's a, it is an impressive looking place. Um, and uh, I guess, unfortunately, as even uh, the leaders there, as that last scripture we were looking at, I guess they didn't listen to Paul's closing message about being careful because, like Pastor John said, there's not much there anymore. And interestingly, I do a bit of my own research. It seems like the first church, uh, sorry, the first church in the world to be named after Mary was in Ephesus. That's what the, the locals all claim, that's their claim to fame. So, I don't know, perhaps that's why where they went wrong, but... Anyway, uh, all right, we're good here. The Lord's my shepherd. Thanks, Ivy. The Lord's my shepherd. Can I just quick show of hands if you haven't yet received the, the elements? Just a couple at the back on this side, a couple over this side as well. All right. Well, as uh, most of us here will be, be well familiar with, we're going to be uh, thanking the Lord in a short moment for um, his broken body and his spilt blood for the, the sacrifice that he went through for us. I might get the brothers that I've asked to come and make their way down to the microphone if they could. Um, and it's just a, a time for us to really to stop and to, and to remember what the Lord did for us. And, you know, even the fact of, of what God did for us, that he would allow his son to go through what he went through for sinners, you know. We, you know, none of us here, I don't believe, could claim that we were perfect and righteous. Um, but uh, through God's love and his mercy, he allowed his son to, to be cruelly beaten and, and killed so that we might have forgiveness of sins and that, that after that he would be raised from the dead so that we could uh, also be raised and walk in newness of life. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful privilege that we have. And even that last verse we were singing about, you know, dwelling with the Lord forever. That's just an amazing concept even to try and think about, you know. And, uh, you know, it's been a hard year perhaps for some or perhaps for many of us. But uh, just thinking about we have a future. And that's always something that uh, can keep you going, get you out of the bed in the morning and, and to face the day because, you know, we have a future in the Lord. So, all right, I think we're all been waited on now so I might get you all to stand I might just ask our brother Milan to, to ask the Lord's blessing on the bread for us hallelujah praise the Lord thank praise you, the Lord, Lord God hallelujah. thank you Lord thank you Father thank you Jesus Lord Father God uh, how good uh, and pleasant this uh, for the brethren to dwell together in unity Lord Father God uh, but that unity Lord Father God uh, there's only way to be created through your son Jesus Christ Lord uh, 
There's no other unity in this world, Lord Father, that we can see for ourselves. Uh, Lord Father God, uh, it is your plan, Lord Father God. Who would ever think like you think, Lord Father God, uh, for that uh, way the scripture is fulfilled when you said, uh, my ways are not the ways of man. My thoughts are not the thoughts of man. Lord Father, we can see, Lord God, how can anyone do those things, Lord Father, sending his own son, Lord Father God, uh, to be persecuted, Lord Father God, to be killed. Uh, but also, Lord Father God, you knew what's going to happen, Lord Father God, uh, because your plan is a wonderful, Lord Father God. It's your wonderful obedience of your son, Lord Father God, uh, who did all things for you. Require of him, Lord Father God, that the wonderful things came upon us, Lord Father God. Uh, and there we are, witnesses today, Lord Father, standing before you, Lord, proclaiming, Lord Father God, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, not only who died, but also risen. Lord Father, give us a new life, Lord Father God. Uh, as we partake this element this day, Lord Father God, uh, we just remember, Lord God, uh, what you actually have done for us, Lord God. How wonderful and how pleasant is this, Lord Father God, to have uh, what a new life in you, Lord God. We just thank you now, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just reading from 1 Corinthians 11, it says here, this is Paul, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And let's take the bread now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, Lord Saviour. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thanks, Greg. Yes, Father Lord, uh, we just, uh, as we stand here, uh, uh, just in our own mortal bodies, we know that uh, we uh, can't stand here righteous without uh, the sacrifice that uh, you sent your son to do for us, that the, uh, the blood he spilt uh, is what's been enabled to wash us and, uh, and give us that, uh, that righteousness that we can stand before you. So as we just take this emblem now, we just give you all the praise and the glory and thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just reading on, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he come. Let's take the cup. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we're going to move into a time of the spiritual gifts now. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. If it's perhaps your first time here or you're viewing from home, um, you can look at that, into that scripture or perhaps someone here might share that with you. But uh, I think we're all ready now, so let's uh, look away for the gifts to be operated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I shall money, And you shall see the kingdom of heaven, my children. There are come things that are come upon you, and you say, Why me, Lord? Why me? But I make you stronger every time you overcome. And you are, I am coming back for the overcomer, my Lord, my children. Your Lord is waiting for you. So be at peace, my children. I give you peace through the Holy Spirit that I have given unto you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My word is easy, my walk is easy, and I say unto you, my children, that I have set out a direction for you, I have planned a map for you, and I say unto you that this map is to be read, and my directions are to made, be made clear, and they're straight. I say unto you, who going for a trip is going to get their map out and just ignore the directions? You're going to be lost. And I say unto you, if you do not follow my directions, you are going to be lost. I say unto you, it's an easy walk. And I say unto you, to follow my commandments is so easy. But do not trust in the word, the word that the world wants you to have. 
I say unto you that we are different. And I, ga I gave you the difference, my children, with the Holy Spirit. And I say you will know right from wrong. And I say to you, walk in the truth, and I will set you free. Praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I do remind you to go out there and spread my message so they too can know this. So my children, please brighten the corner where you are, says the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Gifts of prophecy now. going to come upon this earth that the world wants to be blinded to, but I have said in my word that heaven and earth shall pass away. We shall be together forever, my children, that there will be destruction coming upon the earth, but you will be saved, my children. Not a hair on your head shall be touched, my children. Have I not promised this? Have I not promised a peace that passes understanding? Have I not promised you eternal life, my children? For all that overcome, for all that read my word, that pray to me every day, my children, that overcome this world, I will come and collect you. I will take you. We will be together forever, my children. Cleave to this promise. Cleave to my promise in my word, my children. Pray in the spirit and I will uplift you every day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. his life it is a precious it is a precious gift and I send to you this day the word of God is wisdom knowledge truth understanding all these things said the living God that you can walk a simple walk walk in truth be circumspect about this world be aware of the environment you're living in because there are such negative influences I send to you this day walk in truth be simple, be, be positive, and uh, look towards Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, so the living Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. that you will be well pleasing in my eyes and in my sight, saith the Lord. For I have appointed shepherds over you that will faithfully guide you. I have given you my word, and that is true and sure, and you can look into this word whenever you need it. For truly, my son was the word made flesh. He has ensured that you have clear guidance and direction. So look into the word, seek out the shepherds and use all the tools that I've laid at your feet for surely, surely I want all of you to succeed. I want all of you to be happy. I want all of you to inherit the promises that I've laid down for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise the Lord now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. All the people said, Amen. You might be seated. We're going to move into a time of prayer now. Perhaps if you're uh, visiting us here today, um, we hope you've uh, enjoyed what you've heard from the platform and been encouraged and inspired to, to act and to perhaps come out and be baptised or to come and pray to receive the Holy Spirit, to be born again. 
you know, the experience that we read about in the book of Acts today, you know, we are that book of Acts church because those, those things are still available. You know, back in uh, chapter 2, Peter said, you know, to all that are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And that's still happening today. So if you're here today and uh, you're perhaps visiting, consider yourself called. Come and, uh, and take what the Lord's uh, offering for you. The rest of us, we're going to be in prayer. And uh, I believe there should be a, a link there in the, um, the YouTube there for a Zoom. If you want to have a, a bit of a chat, you've got some questions. Um, or even here, if you're, you're new here today and you've got some questions, I'm sure there'll be somebody there to, to, to show you through the scriptures anything you're unsure of you've heard today because we are that Bible-based church. But for now, well, let's, uh, let's all be in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All the people who might start singing that from the top, there is a saviour, okay? One, two, three.
set us free Now all I want Is to speak of Him And spread His word To the man in sin Praise the Lord, you're sounding really good here today. We're giving people an opportunity to be baptised. We've heard already today in testimony, the stories that you've heard, uh, and also in the talk here this afternoon. God desperately wants to have a good relationship with you, a real one, a living one, one that will be with you all the days of your life if you so desire, and that can start here today. We're going to have a, another chorus um, while you think about that, and then we'll return to the announcements. Anybody got a favourite? Yes, uh, Barbara? Revival fire. Revival fire, okay. While people are thinking about getting baptised, we've got the baptism tank, we've got change rooms, we've got the facilities that need you to get baptised. Or we'll be here for a while if you want to come down to 255 Pimpala Road, Woodcroft. We're here to baptise you as well. We'll wait around for that as well. should give anybody who's got a, an inkling, a little seed of faith, a good motivation to be baptised today. It's just a little seed of faith. That's all that's required for you to be baptised and filled with the Holy Ghost today. We'll give you a lot of opportunities still after the meeting, but we'll just turn to our announcements just for keeping things flowing today. If we can have uh, those announcements up. Right. Fellowship here this afternoon. We've had the prayer and fast yesterday and started Friday. Uh, next week we've got Life After Jesus Christ. Kevin's doing the talk there, the second presenta talk, or presentation, maybe, talk. Next, 
um, bring your belongings. We're starting the school. The, the, the school's using this hall here tomorrow. As you know, we hire out the school. For the schools, we hire at this place. So we need to take all our possessions and the seats will be cleaned, etc. tonight, uh, ready for the school tomorrow. Uh, outreach continuing on. We had great success there. We continue to do that. A lot of people have come to the Lord through that outreach. Um, we've had last Sunday, last Thursday, in the history of the Pentecostal. We've got the Catholic Church coming up in a fortnight's time on the Thursday. Proven to be a great success. We've got the Assembly Cup. So that's the big soccer game. I think Woodcroft won it last year, didn't they? Yep. I think we've got th three years in a row, so let's go for it. We've, we've paid the referee. <laughs> Joking. Um, 21st night's coming up. We can, that can be live stream as well, which we heard yesterday at the, at the prayer and fast. If, the, from the luxury of your home, you can even send little photos of what you're doing at home in relation to the 21st night. Next. Now, when you arrived today, there was uh, Naomi, Tyler, and Rebecca at the table there, filling in your, helping you to become a registered person for camp. They're going to be there at the end of the meeting here today and we'll, we'll do that for the next couple of weeks, give opportunity for people to register if you need any help there. Next week we've got Hallett Cove, Woodcroft, Everfall Park and anybody else that is needing to come, if you're new, if you're overside, if you're family, you want to come, there's a reason you need to be here, it's opened up for you as well. So we, more and more we're opening it up to everybody but we'll obviously have to be mindful of the restrictions a little bit there. Now, every year we have to do this. Before we had to do the escape, there's a fire, pretend there's a fire. Uh, we're not doing that. But last year we had Johnny to do, once a year we have to do an update of our requirements here in the hall, particularly the number of the schools are using it. But for our benefit, if people have come to the Lord this year, this will be the first time they're seeing this or hearing from Johnny. For us, it'll be a repeat, but I'll hand over to Johnny to do with the regulations within the hall. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, indeed, as Pastor Chris said, this is something we've got to go through once a year. Um, we don't have to do any um, surprise evacuations or anything like that. So uh, we can go through this. We just do a refresher every year on this. We'll probably do it the Sunday after the AGM, just keep all things in order. Um, so this is our Woodcroft uh, Emergency and Critical Incident Procedures. And um, it's just important to remind everyone here, everyone who's at home, uh, what we need to do should an emergency occur here. Um, so we have, you've heard of, I'm sure, at workplaces, schools, wherever, we have wardens. Uh, if you can read through the slide up there for yourself, but as far as we're concerned, their primary role is the preservation of life. So the people that we have around that uh, know they are wardens, um, the aim is to get everyone uh, safe if there is an emergency. Um, that said, in the specific case of a fire, uh, if you know how to use a fire extinguisher, if you're in the region of the fire um, you, and it's uh, safe to do so, you can obviously attempt to put it out yourself. But um, so far, that's only been in the kitchen and that one was taken care of. <laughs> uh, so who are our wardens? Um, just to go through quickly, uh, so the chief fire warden is the highest ranking oversight member who's on site at the time. So for us as our um, Revival Fellowship Chairman, if Pastor Paul's here, he's the one who's uh, in charge. Um, otherwise, angels, hall managers, we go down the list um, as to those that we go to. And anyone that's got a key um, falls under that list as well. You may be here on your own, for example, or with some other people doing some maintenance, things like that. So. Um, the things we've designed is to be flexible for everybody to work in with what we've got to keep it as simple as possible so that we all know what to do, that we all stay safe at the end of the day. What do you do in an emergency? What do I do in an emergency? I'm just going to read through this one. So first and always, again, this is whether you see this at school, here, work, anywhere, it will always be remain calm and try and help others to remain calm. Um, that's how we all stay safe at the end of the day. Uh, if it's safe for you to do so, remove other people from danger. Uh, we then contact emergency services or make sure somebody has if we need to on triple zero. 
Uh, if we're here on a Sunday, we notify, if you're aware of something around the place, we let the people on foyer duty know and they'll come and let the, the uh, pastors know down here. Um, uh, anything else you've got, whether it's young people or if we're here for schools, uh, the people who are here will know who's in charge. Um, that's who we go to or a member of the oversight. And the chief warden, whoever is uh, the chief warden on site at the time, will decide what's next safe thing to do. So whether we all stay in here, whether we evacuate and so forth. If we have to evacuate, um, as ordered by the chief warden in that circumstance, again, same thing, we remain calm because otherwise people get hurt in the evacuation more than what the emergency itself is. So we follow their instructions, the people around. We've used people that are our natural leaders amongst the church so that um, we're kind of used to hearing their voice and um, advising us what to do. We go through the nearest exit, which is always the ones that are labelled with a fire emergency exit sign. Um, <clears throat> then the wardens themselves will, uh, if it's safe to do so, check through the building. Uh, we move to the assembly uh, point, uh, which is on the northwestern side of the car park. We'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. And we wait there until we're advised what to do next. Um, the biggest issue with this one is when we've done them at work and we have to do the pretend getting out of the building, people tend to leave and go for a coffee or something like that. Um, that actually means that if there was an emergency here and if there was a fire, you're the result of a warden or maybe even a fire whoever going back into a danger zone to look for you. So that's really critical that we just all stay together. The more we do that, the quicker we can all get on with life. So, we all know this, hopefully. Google Maps, most of us use it. This is um, our hall, as you would see it. That's north. We drive in at the gates on the south. And most importantly, that's where we meet. That's the northwestern point. There's a sign out there. Um, it's amongst the plants at the moment, but we're working on that as well. So this we went through in a bit more detail last year, but again, if you can have a read of that, if you know that you're in a circumstance where you would struggle to get out of the building in the case of an emergency, um, it's a good idea to go through this form. They're out in the foyer. Uh, you can talk with the foyer duty staff. It then comes back through to um, the chief warden, who for us on a regular basis would be Pastor Chris just to make sure that we know what's in place for that person. Um, usually it means, for example, if I can use a case of our, our sister here that, um, who's in a wheelchair, it might be um, Liz who's responsible for our sister on the day. She makes sure that she's safe and that she can get out of the building. And that's all we need on here, just to make sure that we know that somebody who's in a specific circumstance um, can be looked after and can be kept safe. So this is probably the one that's changed a little bit from last year. Um, we have three locations now for our first aid kit. They've all got a little book in them. Um, for example, we've just done, gone through our one in the main hall foyer there. Things have been used, which is great. That's what they're there for. There's a little book in there and a pen, and it's just helpful if you can write, you know, 15th of November, I took a Band-Aid because when somebody opens it, rather than having to necessarily check every little thing, they can open the book and go, that's what I need to replace. Unfortunately, a few things have been used and not written down, so just take someone a bit more time to double check these things off, and we're all volunteers trying to help out. The big news is that we now have an AED, or an automated external defibrillator, which is sitting in the main hall foyer. That essentially tells you what state somebody is in for those that haven't used them or haven't done CPR training, which I think is almost everybody these days, but um, it runs you through that process until the emergency services arrive. So it's really great that we've got one here now. Um, we haven't necessarily needed one in the past, but it's there and they can be lifesavers, that's proven. So it's great that we've got one at all of our venues now um, across uh, Adelaide. So um, that's good to know if you go elsewhere. Um, these same things apply. And for this last one here, we've got three registered first aiders for Woodcroft. Not likely that those three people are going to be here on a regular basis. And um, if you know that you have a first aid certificate, again, please just go out to the foyer duty staff. They can um, take down your name, 
and we can add you to our list of people that we can go to in a time of need. This is one that we didn't cover last year, but um, we've got a form that we fill out in case we have an incident, and this just means that in the circumstances where you have something happen to you while you're here at the hall, and there needs to be whatever further investigation, or if you need you know, assistance with things after you leave the hall, if it becomes an ongoing long-term program, this is what actually helps you and us um, actually enable that support to be ongoing. If there's no record of something happening, then unfortunately you're, you're probably on your own. So uh, it's really simple. It literally takes about 30 seconds and um, it can be accessed as it's an online form through the computer in the foyer. The foyer duty staff can do that. Or if you come to um, any of the oversight, um, they can direct you obviously where to go if you're unsure. And um, we can make sure that you're all safe and sound. And that is everything. So thank you for listening to that. That's our update for this year. Don't have to listen to me again till next year, hopefully. Um, so just on the schools that is coming in, as Pastor Chris mentioned, we actually need to relocate all of the movable chairs that are on the, on the flat floor here. So we're not rushing you away, but if you are going down to the atrium, please maybe just take your belongings with you today. Um, so that we can start to clean through here and, and reorganise the chairs as much as possible. Sorry? Uh, so, Ramundo South Coast is on cleaning duty today. Um, so, that's Jill back there. Um, always good to have some extra help, especially we've got a school coming in tomorrow. It's nice to make sure that we're uh, nice and clean through here. But especially in the movable chairs here, if you're going downstairs for a time, either maybe put your Bibles in the car or take them with you, that would be really helpful for us. Um, we're just going to close the meeting with a word of prayer now, and we're going to just ask Graham if he can do that for us down here. All right, if you'd all like to be upstanding. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord Praise Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name. Lord, uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity to just uh, gather around your word this uh, week, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the, uh, to hear your word faithfully preached, to take your Holy Communion for this one day out of seven for your sacrifice, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the uh, marvellous uh, testimonies deliverance we heard from our brother and our sister, Lord Jesus. And uh, just uh, in closing, Lord, just uh, bless the week before us. And for now, Lord, just bless the fellowship. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. your name. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Praise your name. All the people said. Mm. Thank you. See you all on Wednesday.